Today, I would like to thank all my investing friends. Terima kasih. With your support, I finally get to join investors briefing. How exciting! Anyway, I learned a lot from the investor briefing, so let me spill you with some tea, shall we? <sighs> hey guys, it's HY, your investing friend. Today, let me share with you one of my biggest mistakes in 2023. SMRT Holdings Per Heart. 700% return in less than one year. Newbie. I know you must be thinking, typical Malaysia company, goreng here and there. Or, is it? Their office is located in University of Cyberjaya because they previously involved in two main businesses, technology business and education business. They used to hold 42% shareholding in Minda Global Berhad, another public listed company that owns the University of Cyberjaya and Asia Metropolitan University. I guess that's why their office is there lo. And when I check into the management team behind SMRT and Minda Global, I noticed that the biggest boss behind is Tan Sri Dr. Palan and he's also the pro chancellor of University of Cyberjaya. So the education business is probably controlled by Tan Sri Dr. Palan. In 2016, SMRT acquired 64% of an IT company called NTS for 6 million ringgit. And slowly, the IT company grew a lot bigger. So from what I heard, Maha Palan, the son of Tan Sri Dr. Palan, is the one managing this IT company. And on 7th February 2003, SMRT announced that they want to dispose their education business and acquire the remaining 36% stake in NTS to fully turn into a tech player. Ever since the announcement was made, SMRT share price fly go go. Why leh? Because now only people realize that the technology business is making huge profit. It was hidden because the education business was making losses. The education business was making losses since 2018. That is where the total profit number of SMRT also gonna drag down. So nobody noticed that there is a hidden growing tech company in SMRT before the announcement was made. This is a big hard lesson for me to learn. Because if I kept an eye on the annual report and really read into it, especially the business segment breakdown part, I could have found this gold mine earlier than anyone else. Most of us only look at the total number, like total profit, la, total revenue. La. We don't really look into segmental information. And if we only look at the total number, we won't be able to find out which business is actually making Ooh. money or which business is actually losing money. Now let's look at the segmental profit and revenue breakdown for SMRT. It is very clear that the tech side is bringing so much profit to the company. It is the other business segments that drag the total profit number to Holland. Before the announcement, uh, the total market cap of SMRT is around 60 million ringgit. And that time, the tech business is already making almost 20 million ringgit profit. That is a P.E. ratio of 3 and what does that mean? For your information, the average P.E. for high growth companies or tech companies is 25. So don't be like hash right. When read annual report, remember to read segmental info. Don't repeat my mistake. You are in control of your own wealth. Okay, okay, enough of my Amtech story. So what does SMRT tech business actually doing? Internet of things. Some way atas, right? But actually very simple. Anything that connects to the internet is called internet of things. For example, some of your new TV la, rice cooker la, aircon la, that you can connect through internet and control them using your phones instead of remote. These are IoT where device can talk to each other through internet. SMRT is doing the same thing, but it's in the B2B world that try to solve commercial problems. Some of their notable customers are TMB, PLN, which are the biggest electric utility company in Malaysia and Indonesia. An example of the problems that they are solving is, let's say, Zaman dulu, when you're building lost power, right? You have to call the nugget and wait for the customer service to pick up your call. They will then transfer your calls here and there, and only they come and troubleshoot and fix problems. 
less less also take half day to fix the thing so what smrt do is they install iot monitoring device in each tmb substation then all the device will transfer the data to a centralized system at hq and smrt will monitor and troubleshoot the problems remotely through internet no need to tap out all your kacang and drive to substation to repair hub die anymore everything settled through internet easy peasy so from here we can see that the business model of smrt comes from installing iot device and service and also help their client to manage and do maintenance and in TMB's annual report, we can see that TMB has over 97,000 substations in Malaysia. And so far, SMRT has already installed their services in over 15,000 substations. So there's still room for their one off installation revenue to grow. Well, nice. And, and, and currently, their recurring revenue from management and maintenance is already 59% of the pipe. Over time, the pie will continue to grow and should provide a very steady income stream to the company. And if they can copy paste the successful model in TMB to Indonesia and beyond, that would be very interesting. From the briefing, I feel that the management is very confident and proud of their IoT technology. One case study from the management is that they won the open tender from PLN Indonesia, which is the biggest utility company in Indonesia. Basically, it is like TNB. Lah. That time, ah, there were six companies participated in this tender, but only SMRT directly won the contract because of their better technology and their technical support. So in short, what SMRT do is they target all the legacy utility business like electric, la, water, la, ONG, or even the banking and retail industry and provide IoT service to them. From the briefing, the management said that they are now venturing into water business. Mm, I'm not a very big fan of water business la, because most of the water businesses in the world are very high in debt and mostly lose money when, and because of that, they are well known to be a bad paymaster. But anyway, we will see how SMRT can perform in the future lo. Let's talk about things that I like about SMRT. Number one, SMRT business generates recurring income. This means that they will have sustainable cash flow coming in even if they don't get new contracts. And on top of that, the profit margin from their maintenance is even higher than their one-off installation service. And from what I observed, the turnaround period for installation is not that long as those solar EPCC players. So I think it is very highly unlikely that they will face cash flow problems. Number two, their strong tech capacity and support. It seems like they have the tech to outcompete their competitors based on what management shared lah. And their customers cannot just simply change provider once they install their IoT device because it involves both hardware and software integration. Sticky business, good. Number three, positive operating cash flow. So far, most of their one-time installation service has successfully converted into recurring income and their operating cash flow has been positive so far. But we still need to monitor closely and this leads to the first thing that I don't like about SMRT. Number one, SMRT is highly dependent on their few major customers. Now, I think it's around four customers take up around 90% of their total profit. Which means, uh, got one customer suddenly pull out and don't want to use their service anymore. Then this will impact SMRT low. Number two, high receivables. SMRT has very high receivables, close to 300 million ringgit right now. This is almost the whole company's market cap. So we need to monitor closely and see whether they can collect back the money or not. Looking at their customer profile, which are mostly GLCs, I think it should be fine lah. But better that we be careful than sorry, my right? And number three, SMRT is still a family business. Currently, SMRT is still controlled by the Palan family and most family businesses in Malaysia is not very kind to shareholders in Busa. For example, currently they have 20% share grant plan for the directors and employees of SMRT. To me, 
this is a bit too high lah and shareholders should understand the dilution effect if they really issue that much in short i personally like the company's business model and their management team because very handsome oh my god no because they are very confident in what they are doing lah but we really need to be careful on their high receivables and see whether they can collect back the money or not especially when they are highly dependent on few major customers anyway stay safe and stay strong investing i will see you in my next video